One of my favorite features in Vue 3.5 is Deferred Teleport. While it sounds small, allowing us to mount a teleport after the current render cycle, it actually enables a lot of really cool new use cases. This is what I've built with it, where we have a dashboard with these movable widgets that get teleported to different spots around the screen. So in this video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into how it works and then check out what it lets us do. So before we take a look at Deferred Teleport, we should take a look at what it means when Vue mounts a component and also how the teleport without Defer works. When a component has mounted, it means that all of its synchronous children have mounted and that its DOM tree has been created and inserted into the parent container. So let's say we have our root app.view component that uses a foo.view component. When app.view is mounted, this is what our DOM will look like. However, when the child is mounted, this is what our DOM will look like. It doesn't have anything since the child is mounted to the parent and then this parent as a whole is what gets mounted to our app element. Let's break this down a little bit more. In a simplified way, mounting has kind of three steps, creating the element or setting up the component, processing any children, and then inserting that element into a parent container. So if we walk through our example, first we'll create a div, and then we start processing as children. So we hit the foo component that spits out our paragraph tag. There are no children processed. And then this paragraph tag gets inserted into its parent div. So then we process the next child of our div, which is this parent text. That element gets created. It has no children. And then that gets inserted into our div. Since our div has no more children to process, it will get inserted into its parent container, which is the root of our app. So basically everything here will get processed and handled and then inserted into the actual DOM. And this is the reason that using teleport like this doesn't work. If we try it, we just get this error. And if we go back to our diagram, we can see why. Our div gets created, our target gets created and inserted into our div, and then our teleport gets processed. So now I was trying to do a query selector looking for this ID of target, but since our parent div hasn't been inserted into the root yet, it's not actually in the DOM. So saying teleport defer allows us to wait until the current render cycle finishes before our teleport tries to mount. By giving it that extra tick, everything else will get added to the actual DOM. So when our teleport tries to mount, the target's actually there. This is a pretty simplified version of what's going on, but it all goes to show that deferred teleport lets us target things rendered by our view app. So now that we know how it works, let's look at some use cases. Let's say we have this basic article that has a table of contents on the side. If we make the screen smaller, this table of contents gets ejected between the title and the article content. We can use it for a teleport and the use breakpoints composable from view use to conditionally teleport this to this target area. While we could make our table of contents a component and conditionally render each one, using teleport means that if our component had state, like a bookmark action, for example, we wouldn't have to worry about keeping the two instances of a component in Sync. Basically, anytime you want our DOM structure to be different than our template structure, Deferred Teleport gives us a lot more flexibility. This is a good time to point out that you shouldn't be overusing this or else it can get really messy to inspect your code, but for certain use cases, it's super clutch. Let's run it back to that example I showed in the beginning of the video. This is a great use case for Teleport because it doesn't matter where these dashboard elements are in our template because they can get rendered wherever in these spots. So how I did this is I have an array, each drop zone is an item in that array, and then each of these movable items has a unique ID. Then using which drop zone it's found in and its position in the array, we teleport it to that location. Then using some drag and drop API events, we can change the location of each item. We can visualize it like this. Since our rendering is built on this data structure, each of these drop zones knows how many children to render. Each of these is a teleport target and one extra section for when we drag something new over. Then for each of these items, we can figure out its exact spot by taking the ID of the drop zone it's in and then its index in that items array. From here, we just wrap it with a teleport with the fur and we're good to go. I'm gonna leave a link to this code down below, but don't roast me for it. I just threw it together as a playground, so it's probably still pretty messy. So hopefully this clears up how deferred teleport works. Let me know in the comments if you see any cool use cases in your projects for this. Like and subscribe for more view content and I'll see you in the next video.